We're starting off with a quick visual of what I'm using in this session. A couple of the Van Gogh dusk colors, green and violet, were shown in a previous video. And now that I have the other two in the series, yellow and pink, I wanted to create something using all four colors. You might notice there's a fifth tube though, and that's oxide black, PBK11. It's also been called magnetic black, Mars black, and lunar black by various name callers. It's the common component in this Dusk series. Why get a separate tube of it? Eh, at their prices, why the heck not? I had the vague idea of mixing it with some other colors in my collection, but if PBK11 played well with other colors, wouldn't there be more than four shades in the Dusk series? Recently, I was able to stock up on watercolor papers and decided to try some types and brands I hadn't tried before. This Fluid 100 is one of those. It's 100% cotton and it's the cold pressed version. <laughs> cold pressed makes me think of music track remixes like DJ Fluids Pressed for Paint Ice Cold Mix. I also stocked up on Cheez-Its and Frieza Ritas. Basic essentials. And here are some quick swatches. Yeah, I did a number on them and they look sloppy. But there's a method to the madness. In my opinion, the color separating and granulating effects show better with thuggish handling. Fluid 100 Cold Press is not that textured, honestly, but it seems like a nice enough surface to paint on. I've yet to use it for anything other than swatches in practice, so I haven't formed a strong opinion. I also have a block of Fluid 100 Hot Press, and after my experience with Arches Hot Press, it should be interesting to see how they differ. Several people have recommended Fabriano's hot press from their Artistico line. So if I continue working with hot pressed papers, that would be the next brand I'd like to try. Also new to me is this Arches Rough paper. And the texture here is much more noticeable.
while painting, I appreciated the tooth of this paper, which I would describe as grabby. But, you know, Arch's cold press has a good amount of tooth already, so the difference between their cold press and rough wasn't as big as I'd expected. What I did find to be significantly different was the level of thirst. This paper is thirsty, and it took a while to adjust my water ratios. Eventually, I found that a very wet brush worked for me. So, what came to mind as I painted on this arches rough? Sandpaper. The only other rough paper I've used is Shizen's, which is different. Let's look at it in cooking terms. Shizen's rough is like a diced onion, whereas Arch's rough is like a minced onion. And before you ask, it could be any vegetable, really. The onion has no significance here, unless painting is an activity that's likely to make you cry. But that's between you and your cutting board. Hellebore is part of the Ranunculaceae family. Yeah, Ranunculaceae. That's almost as difficult to say as benzamidazolone. But if you'd rather not tie your tongue into knots, you could also call it the Buttercup family. At least paint makers aren't going around naming their colors Ranunculaceae Violet or I'd have to send letters. On the subject of names, how cool is Hellebore? Cooler still is what I used to call it before I knew better. Hellebore. Because I always imagined a rampaging hog with flaming tusks. This is a simple enough composition, and I'm glad I used the Neptune brushes. There wasn't much fussy detailing. Now, the Neptunes, being synthetic squirrel hair, are considered some of the thirstiest brushes, able to hold lots of water. But I kind of wish I'd tried at least a portion of this piece with the Aqua Elites. In the previous video, I mentioned the great points or tips on the Aqua Elites, but I forgot to say that I was also impressed with their water capacity as well as their even flow. Huh, there's a real grape jelly vibe going on here, yeah?
I want to mention that we've received support in various ways from the wonderful Inkworks viewers. It's a little awkward talking about this since it sort of feels like a PBS pledged break, but I really want to acknowledge the kindness and generosity we've received in recent weeks in the form of several packages containing art supplies big thank yous, and know that I will be sharing the items on the channel so everyone can benefit from these contributions. Another source of support has been the Inkworks Kofi page. I haven't mentioned it before. I'd planned to wait until the channel was bigger before going that route. But my BFF asked for a way to regularly contribute because she was very concerned about my paper security. Hmm, maybe that was because I mentioned low paper stashes in video several times. There's no shop or anything. It's pretty basic, but it has helped to keep the content coming. So, big thank yous to our Kofi contributors. While donations are welcomed and appreciated, please keep in mind that every time you've watched one of these videos, or clicked the like button, or shared it on social media, or left a comment, you've supported this channel, because that all helps us to be seen by others. So, big thank yous to our supporters. As the channel grows, we hope to create more fun content while exploring artsy things, and I want to do another giveaway before the end of the year. Our first one from a couple of months ago was sort of a trial run to figure things out, so it was pretty low profile. The next one we'll make a bigger deal out of. Oh, and since I'm talking about channel things, get this. We're more than halfway to 1,000 subscribers. Yay! One of these days, I'll do a proper sort of video that covers this stuff and slip it into the channel trailer slot on the homepage. But it is not this day. The line work might look like ink, but it's actually concentrated dusk violet. I might have added more oxide black to it, but I just don't remember. I actually would like to explore colored inks someday, but for now it, it seems unnecessary since I can get this inked look without them. Maybe I'm being a stick in the mud though. Kind of like how I once poo-pooed the painting with coffee thing. Yeah, there are some cringy moments inside the Inkworks vault of videos.
I had saved the dusk yellow for the blossom centers, but once it was there, it didn't pop, and I'm not sure why I thought it would. I mean, how vibrant can a mixture of black and yellow be? That's why I grabbed my yellow polychromos pencil to brighten it up. By centers, I mean the reproductive parts consisting of the stamens and pistils and such. But I didn't want to get too specific since I might get it wrong. And I don't know how sensitive flower people are. I mean, I know artists can be a mixed bag. Some will take criticism left and right and never lose their good humor while others will fall apart from a mere, can I make a suggestion? You could say I got a little splat happy. You could also say there's no such thing as too much splat. And since I wasn't satisfied, I added some gray brush pen for additional emphasis. I'm not a floriculturist. What do I know about flowers? But I wonder if experts such as botanists get bent out of shape over stuff like this. I get it. You don't want people going around misrepresenting. But remember, people can always claim it's an interpretation. I have a feeling that excuse is the tweezers of the art world, extracting artists out of tight spots for centuries. I'm hella happy to share this experience. I want to say this piece is so amazing it knocked the nail polish right off my finger. But reality check. It's not my best work and my finger has been like that since the start of this video. Awkward. Until next time, know your stamens from your pistols and stay artsy my friends. 